Mayor Katie Queen starts running towards the sound of gunfire, drawing the revolver that she holstered a few minutes after meeting you. The sniper that was watching your position when you were all in the town square is gone. But just for a second, as he emerges on the roof of the building and runs across a gangplank to the next building, he stops for a moment to stare down the scope of his rifle towards whatever is in the distance and squeezes off a shot before running to the edge of the building, taking a knee to steady himself and preparing to fire again. What do you all do? What's happening? What's happening? 2d6 uh, plus sharp, please. All right. Uh, make sure I'm get my stats. That's a seven. All right. So to in, in that direction, like towards one of the edges of town, there is increasing sustained gunfire. Um, there seems to be, uh, say, all right, I'll give you a little more than that. Um, the gunfire that is happening in the way distance appears to be fairly rhythmic, you know, like multiple shots all at once. And then a few seconds go by multiple shots all at once again. Oh, Whereas that, the, that's suppression fire. Indeed. Whereas the gunshots that are coming from Coventry itself out into these foes is a little more ragged. Um, they're, you know, shots from the rooftop, shots from street level, shots from another building over mm. there. But it's not kind of a sustained, ordered fire. It's more sporadic. Um, so from where you are right now in the relative safety of the middle of town, it sounds like a group of people are marching in to Coventry, firing volleys, and the the fire that is uh, that is returning is a little more scattered. I immediately run out the door, puncture my away jersey to get my wings out, and run to go fly above the incoming fire to find out, figure out more about who this is. Gotcha. So you run out, and <sighs> the wings go out the back of your kind of pressurized suit. You get a bunch of alerts, kind of in the middle of your. Like in the, the the bottom of your your kind of big helmet is kind of this little heads up display, and you get like a little flashing, you know, uh, you know, pressure breach, pressure breach, and you know the kind of the the air filters all turn off because you don't need them anymore. And to your surprise, you're expecting, I don't know, because it's very sterile in here, like you don't smell anything, and you expected that when the kind of the suit punctured when you, you pulled out your wings, um, that it would smell like something. And it doesn't. Um, the, the, the air in Connecticut is not acrid or burning or smells like disease. It smells like nothing. Um, so, you know, you kind of run, get up into, uh, into the sky and give me 2d6 plus sharp plus one because you are airborne. Hmm. Eight. No. Seven. Seven. I can give you the whole story, but you're going to get shot. Your choice. Whole story and you get shot or a uh, partial story and you're able to, uh, uh, you know, you're able to land safely. Uh, whole story, I get shot. I've got pretty good armor. Yep. So you you take to the sky and Coventry itself is really just kind of the, the town square. It's this kind of red, this cobblestone rotary, um, you know, big enough for cars, though there aren't any cars here. And in the middle is kind of this mound of what used to probably be like a real small little park or something. And in the middle of it is this state statue of Nathan Hale on a rock. Um, there are buildings around it, and they're in good repair. It looks almost quaint if you didn't realize that there's no grass and the sky is gray. It would just look like an old picture of a town. Um, beyond kind of the rotary and that first ring of buildings, everything else is ruins. 
um, deliberately torn down. And then beyond that ruins, there's kind of this earthenwork wall. And you don't know if the wall surrounds the whole town. You don't remember like walking through a wall. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, you kind of walked over like a hill. But on this side anywhere, there's like probably a five or six foot high earthenwork wall. On top of it, you see um, Mayor Katie Queen and a couple other people in kind of heavy leathers and stuff or heavy kind of coats uh, firing into kind of this empty field, um, this empty field beyond with the occasional building. As you kind of sail over the defenses, um, the, the few defenders on the wall kind of look up at you and you see them start to kind of move more panicked and take cover. But Katie Queen says something that you can't hear because you're already already out past. Um, what you see in the distance, kind of moving from building to building in a phalanx, uh, your first thought was these are people wearing medieval armor? Like kind of big metal suits, big metal helmets. Um, you take a returning pass and you realize that's not the place. It, it can't be that because the legs are too thin and so are the arms. Uh, these are robots. Robot? Kind of strange, dare I say, old-timey robots. Their arms are just kind of these long cylinders, legs are long cylinders. Every time there's a joint, instead of a joint, it's just kind of this big metal sphere. They're, the center of them is kind of triangular shaped. Almost like they're wearing big metal dresses, like with hoop skirts, Mm -hmm. kind of cylindrical heads, um, you know, kind of big blue eyes, though some of them are flickering into different colors. And all of them are carrying very strange looking rifles. Um, The rifles are, in fact, plugged into them. Oh, great. They're made for this. Uh, you kind of do a bank. All of them kind of look up at once and fire a fusillade into the sky. Um, uh, one or two of the shots, you're not sure because they both hit you at the same time, kind of hit you in the chest. And, you know, you're moving so fast that you just start to bank. But then a third kind of goes through one of your wings. Oh. And so there's a, there's a hole the size of a coin now. And you take one harm from that. Getting shot by these things does two harm, but you're wearing arm. <clears throat> um, and you kind of go into a controlled dive and uh, and head back towards uh, head back towards safety. Being attacked by robots, everybody. What'd you see up there, Darby? They're <clears throat> they're robots. They're robot. There's it's a whole bunch of robots, and they How look. Many? How many, Darby? Um, uh, 70. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what? All robots. It takes 70 to hit me. Okay. where <laughs> For where, anything where, less than that, I wouldn't have gotten hit. <laughs> going to change my note from 10 to 70. <laughs> <laughs> Darby. I panicked. Darby, I okay? It. I, uh, I, 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 I see damage. Are you okay, Darby? I'm okay. Am I, I think I can't, can you tell me what's going on with my wing? I got hit and I started to, I started, something's wrong with it because I started to kind There's of a spin, hole but I was, that makes sense. Um, do you know what direction they were heading? What were, what was their heading? Um, us. Okay. Down which street. <clears throat> what street? Yeah, where are they going? I'm going to intercept them. Where are they headed? Can I try and tune into the robots? 2d6 plus weird. Um, seven. No consciousness to speak of. Oh. Um, a, a, in fact, a, a very deliberate lack of consciousness. It's not like these machines are sentient. You've you, you've played psychically in the minds of things that are just starting to form into a mind, and that is not what these are. There's no hive intelligence. There's no shared programming. There's no early sentience. None of that. 
These things are just machines. Hmm. Horrible. All right. Everyone yeah, cover me. Rifles are pl- like plugged into them slobs. Like, oh, that's cool. Like they're made f- as killing machines. So slobs. Um, yeah. The the I'll give you uh, I'll, I'll let you roll a uh, kind of a tactical assessment here. Two d six plus cool, please. Okay, uh, nine. Nine. All right. Um, I will give you before you ask the one question from read a bad situation. I will give mm-hmm. you more of a tactical kind of a tactical rundown um, based on what Darby says. Your assessment of the situation is that, you know, this little bit of Coventry is kind of the part of Coventry that the residents think is worth defending. Mm -hmm. So there's kind of this small collection of buildings. Then surrounding that are kind of picked over empty buildings. And then beyond that is a kind of a, an earthen, an earthenwork wall. There's still much more town beyond it. But that town has been reduced over the decades such that it really does seem like a almost like a field with an occasional structure in it. So the part of Coventry that's in that direction is gridded out like a, like a suburban street, like a suburban neighborhood. But instead of every block having 20 houses, every block has maybe one or two, and they're not houses so much as ruins. Mm-hmm. So they're walking down, uh, you know, Spring Street, but they're kind of moving across the street, kind of going from building to building mm-hmm. in this like tight little phalanx, 10 by 7. I imagine like, going up, peek, poking around, getting shot at and like getting an assessment. Getting yeah, like bearings. one will one will emerge <clears throat> and kind of look at things and then all of them will emerge. And then one will emerge and look at things and all of them. And occasionally when that first one emerges, uh, Katie Queen or one of the snipers will put a shot through it. And sometimes they drop and sometimes they don't. Instead of 70, let's call them 66. Good job, Katie. Uh, I, have, I have a question that I can ask. Yep, please do. What's, okay, my question is, John Serpico, uh, what's the most vulnerable to me? Um... The most vulnerable thing to you would be, uh, well, would be the rear of them. Mm-hmm. If you were able to get behind them, you'd be able to do damage. Um, mm. These things, uh, you get a sense these things were not built for combat. Mm. But despite that, it looks like they're built heavier up front and weaker kind of weaker behind there appears to be some like exposed machinery you see one of them drop and you see sparks shoot out the back mm-hmm. um which means there's probably something exposed back there mm-hmm. hey darby yeah i bet you can't i can't bet you can't fly me to the back of the phalanx of course i can i don't think you can yes i can i, pick I don't think you up. can Aha! I pick up. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we are now just in we're in combat Mm -hmm. Uh, So everything you do now is just combat. Um, So Darby, you fly Zlobs up there. Uh, Zlobs, this will be your roll, but Darby can roll to assist. Mm -hmm. So Darby, let's have you roll first to to help out. So that's 2d6 plus cool. Three. All right. Um, So... Uh, Darby, you're trying to get slobs behind them. Um, uh, what stops you from doing that? Um, um, oh, um, that, um, slobs insist, insisted on crawling on top of me instead of hold me holding him and i'm just like not used to flying that way i need a bear and keep just being like i'm not a horse i'm not (laughs) slobs i I need i just i it it gives me a better perspective and when i jump i need to be able to control the land stop hitting me with your wing Slobs, if you want stop stop, if you want me i need to get you up really high in order for us to not get shot this is not Nah. <laughs> there's gu- there's gunfire and slobs you can you can hear this isn't the sound of these don't appear to be gunpowder weapons um like there is still kind of a 
a crack of a bullet going supersonic, mm-hmm. but instead of like that that peppery gunpowder kind of sound, it's like a real gun. Not even. It's pneumatic. Oh. oh. So it's oh. not magnetic, it's air pressurized. Hmm. These things are essentially firing air rifles at you. Really huh. powerful air rifles. Hmm. Um, I, I, I radio you in to the other folks on, on the team. Morgan, Mindy, Morgan, Lobs. Mindy, Morgan, Lobs. Mindy, Lobs. 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 me. Hey, it's, it's, it's Lobs. Uh, Hi, Lobs. Dar- How are you? Uh, I'm well, two things. One, Darby keeps hitting me. So it's, it's okay. It doesn't uh, sound like Darby. It, well, it's a stressful situation. Uh, I need a distraction, please. Yeah. Here's why this is important. Um, uh, uh, Darby explained why you didn't get to the rear of them, but let's talk about what happens on that three. Um, yeah. <laughs> I thought that, was, that was the three. No, no. Uh, Slobs, Darby tries to bank because, you know, just with you back there, you're just not gaining enough height. Mm-hmm. Um, these things kind of move into the middle of the street in a phalanx, and it's like you're staring down an old firing line. And Darby, to save both of your lives, pulls in the wing and pitches into a dive. Uh. Um, you get under a volley of of seven of sixty six bullets, and kind of slam into the ground. Ow, um, ow, ow. The two of you are now in front of a group of marching uh, marching robots. Um, oh, they're wearing name tags. That's weird. Uh, and they're just readying to fire at you. So if there is uh, not a distraction now, Zlob's your next roll, whatever it is, is going to be at a minus two. Great. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so you know that robot that fell down? Mm-hmm. Exposed wires? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to send uh, I have a, a good amount of polarized energy at it. To make it magnetic and pull all the robots towards it. <gasps> oh, I love cool. it. Oh, that's um, really cool. <laughs> that's, that's super really cool. cool. Uh, let's do, I mean, that's definitely magic. Uh, let's go with uh, 2d6 plus weird. <laughs> that's a six. All right. Oh, oh no. <laughs> this is going to pull Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Morgan, you run up to you run up to the top of the wall, and uh, you're standing right there next to uh, next to Katie Queen, and you know you kind of start preparing, um, you know, kind of an electrical surge to polarize that thing. Um, you, uh, it's kind of building and crackling. And a number of the uh, a number of the robots start to split out, and they're forming kind of a wider line. And as that is happening, before you are able to actually launch the thing, they fire on you. Um, you take two harm. Uh, spell doesn't work. You are kind of knocked back off the wall. Um, uh, Katie Queen turns to look at you, and you realize she has also been shot. <gasps> no. Oh okay. no. Um uh I run out towards the robots. Uh-oh. Sure. Vault the wall, start sprinting across the field. Yep. I take out my big knife. Big knife. And I um stab one of them? <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um let's roll to kick some butt. I don't know. I don't know what else to do my it's the only weapon i have yeah it's a good one 2d6 plus tough oh no hold on let me roll this one again and remember in your uh, away jerseys you have a plus one to tough Hmm. okay um five oh god oh um you take two harm mindy um you start running towards one of them, and as you're getting closer, you're getting a much clearer vision of what these are. Um, the name tags on all of them are the same, and there's kind of like a patina around the name tag at this point. 
years and years of rust. But the name's unmistakable. Charlotte. They all say Charlotte. Um, and you think, isn't that strange? And that's when you're shot in the chest. <gasps> the armor takes it, but you are you are knocked backwards because it feels like you were hit with a baseball bat. Uh, Zlobs, it's right. your turn Plan- next, and it's a minus two to whatever you do. Great. Well, plans change. I was going to be tactful and lead them to me, but seeing that forces my hand. So I'm going to jump in the middle of them and activate all of my, my EMP grenades. 2d6 plus tough minus two. What? Uh, so plus two. So I it's tough. So I get plus one, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, seven. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. Um, partial success. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll give you. I'll give you seven of them down. One. One for each. Oh, great! What uh, one tenth of them? <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Fine. Uh, two for each. You're down to fifty-two. Great. Um. You kind of run it. You run into the middle. Um, and you know, not all of your grenades are EMP. You have kind of a cluster. So you kind of pull the pins on a couple Yeah. and, um, and yeah, there's kind of that loud thumping staticky, like kind of noise of an EMP grenade going off. Um, it like really finds its way into your fillings. It's yeah. It it rattles Uh, you. A dozen of them, um, immediately start spraying hydraulic fluid and sparking. Um, these machines you realize are mostly pneumatic. It's all compressed air in there and hydraulic fluid. The thing you short out are some of the, uh, some of the little dynamos in their head. Um, so about a dozen of them go down, um, but not really, they don't explode. They don't short out. Essentially now they're just walking without commands. So half a dozen of them just start kind of lumbering into the distance. A few more just kind of fall and start scrambling like injured animals. Um, it's, it's rather grotesque. Uh, the other 52, um, uh, well, you know, they, they're able to divide into two groups. One group is the firing line that's continuing to march on Coventry. Uh, the other half, let's say 26 of them, uh, are starting to circle you with the intent, it seems, of um, peeling off your armor and then killing you. Um, oh, God, it starts with you taking two damage. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll go from there. Who's going next? Uh-oh. Okay, it's time to dive bomb them. I'm feeling tough. Um, I'm going back in the air and then <clears throat> as high as I can go, and then going into a spin into one of them in the circle, but like at an angle so that I can try to just domino through all of them. Just pure force. Just me, like I like a bullet myself. Bowling ball style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, 2d6 plus tough. Twelve. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um... You deal double damage, you take no damage, all sunflowers gain plus one on their next roll, or the target flees. The target flees. Good choice. Um, You do exactly what it is, kind of arcing up into the sky in kind of like the the wide spiral that you do to gain height and distance. And then you kind of arc back, go into a dive, uh, wings in, and kind of sweep down low at uh, at ground level and slam through the firing line and into the group that is starting to pummel slobs. Mm-hmm. Um, at least half a dozen of them are blown down. Uh, one of them kind of spins its cylindrical head and its lights in its eyes start flashing between like blue and red. And all of a sudden, just, just as fast as turning off a light switch, they just stop what they're doing and fall into a retreat. 
Oh, thank you. Get out of bad. here. <sighs> Kate, Katie. I'm fine. I'm fine. You're fine. I'm fine. Is she fine? Uh, she's not fine. <laughs> First no. aid. First aid. I'm, yep. I'm going to First aid. Up. Yeah. I, I take out my first aid kit. You have a first aid kit. Uh, Mindy, 2d6 plus sharp, please. Oh. Um, five. Um, this is an awful hurry that you're working under. Um, you, you start to kind of, like, there's just blood all you know, lower abdomen and you start to kind of like move like the, like kind of big, heavy, like wooden planks that are clearly like in her clothing and stuff to try to get to it. And she kind of grabs your arm and says, no, no, not here. People can't know. And, uh, you know, you end up kind of scrambling into, uh, into some ruins behind the wall, uh, or within, within the wall and only undercover, does she like let you look? And yeah, she's been shot clear through the abdomen. Oof. Um, and she's bleeding out. Uh, you stop the bleeding, but that does not mean surgery. What that means is you're wadding up gauze and like stuffing it into the mm. uh, into the bullet wound, which it went clear through. Um. Uh. She's not going to die right now. She's not going to make it to tomorrow. Can I use a, a healing ritual? I brought my mortar and pestle. Ritual magic, huh? Um, yeah, a, a regular old magic uh, magic spell would heal one harm. Mm -hmm. That would not be enough. This is going to need to be ritual magic. Um, if you want to use it, I will tell you what you need. Okay. I do want to use it. If, if only we had snacks. Yeah. <laughs> snacks Zenith here. That, that would have been nice. Snacks, <laughs> snacks would square this up. Um, uh, the absolutely infuriating thing is that you need fresh herbs. Oh. Um, mm. you, you kind of say as much to your, your colleagues and, uh, and the mayor looks at you. If you think dry will do, I think I know where you can get some. We might, we might be able to maybe just maybe. I don't want to live for me. You know, I need to live for them. I hate to be selfish and ask you to do something. And she coughs up blood at this point. Mm. Um, Katie Queen, uh, one of the other people in town uh, kind of runs in. You think it was the sniper from the roof, actually. Um, he, he kind of runs in, uh, you know, kind of pulls off his mask and looks and like he and Katie share a look and they don't need to exchange words. Um, and he looks at all of you. Um, you realize in this moment how old he is. He's maybe a little younger than Nana Mathers. In point of fact, Katie Queens maybe only a few years younger than him. Um, moves pretty well for for you know for someone that's seen that many decades. Um, he kind of kneels down, and he and Katie kind of share a few words. Uh, and Katie is prop kind of propped up against a wall, and he talks to you. The Lakesiders. The Lake Siders. They're east of here. They make supply runs south into Rhode Island. 
bargain with them and they could get you whatever you need. Like fresh herbs? Fresh as they could get. What do you say, gang? We'll do it. We'll be back before sundown tomorrow. Um, Katie Queen nods and closes her eyes. Um, yeah. Uh, the Lakesiders. You're given kind of a general direction, but you don't know how far it is. Um, slobs, give me a 2d6 plus cool. I'll let this be a tactical roll. Uh, eight. Eight. Let me just quickly pull up a map of Connecticut. You're you're not given much more than a direction and a name, um, which is a little a, a little tricky. Um, and you realize if you ask someone in town, "Hey, we need to quickly go find the Lakesiders," presumably people would know what's up. So you're trying to figure out what could that mean. And so you start looking for nearby lakes. And the absolute closest one is the lake that surra- uh, surround, uh, surrounds Mansfield Center, two miles east. Okay, not okay. that far. I'll prep the sniper with uh, new bandages and instructions on how to change them out. He uh, he is a a um, a very very willing um, a very willing student of this, and he nods. Um, and yeah, with that, off you all go. Um, b- before we go, what happened to the other group of robots? Half retreated, half. The ones that uh, couldn't retreat are some of them are crawling away and the rest are essentially kind of disabled mm-hmm. and in one pieces. Of, can I one of them I'm while Mindy's prepping, I'm gonna fly out and then go just drag one back in so that mm-hmm. folks in the town can do some investigating into what exactly this is. Yeah. Um you you drag it in and one of the one of the other residents in the town also an elderly person um you know uh you've kind of leaned the robot up against the rock in the middle of town and uh she kneels down and looks at it yes this is this is as i thought i thought i saw that name before you've seen it before the name the charlotte this is not the first time they've come but this is the first time we were able to push them back what happened the other times they came? We abandoned the city and then came back in. Did Are they the ones, are some of these ruins because of them? Did they destroy parts of the town? Some, but it's like they're looking for something. Like they're look. any idea what it could be? Oh yeah. Oil and parts. For Every themselves. time they- Every time they come through, they they take they take, and it's things we can't afford to lose. Do you do you know we either, what the name might mean? Charlotte does that have any sort of importance? Well, I don't know why something like this would be. I mean, why would they be here? Connecticut's always been like this. Yeah. Always? Oh, yeah. Right. Can I take a look at one of the robots on our way out of town? Sure. Um, 2d6 plus sharp, Mindy. Mm, 10. Yeah. There's one of these in the basement of your house, Mindy. What? (laughs) Hasn't been turned on in decades. No point for it. This is a Charlotte sweeper. 
built by the Charlotte Company. Autonomous, programmable, and built right here in beautiful Connecticut. This is, of course, before the war. They operate right, with punch cards way. and vacuum tubes. You've played around with them, actually. Oh. I know these guys. Y you do? What? What? Yeah, you they're... Know Charlotte? Is it, is it related to Charlotte Yeager? No, it's the Charlotte Company. Oh. What? What? Why would they have... Why would their task be to do this? Maybe they're just trying to sustain themselves. That's after. what it sounded... Yeah, that's what it sounded like with the, per, the person I just talked to. Hmm. Like, they're yeah. just coming for parts and the survival. Mindy, you, you crack open its head. No reason to be sacred about this. And because you have experience with this yourself, you realize that um, this is all. these all operate on punch cards and vacuum tubes. So those EMP grenades didn't short out. Like, it doesn't have circuitry. What the EMP did is it blew out vacuum tubes. So mm. it was no longer able to read its commands. Right. Um, and so you pulled out a bunch of the punch cards and... A lot of them look standard, you know, kind of kind of hand punched at a factory somewhere. No, speci actually, specifically, you know, where is that? Where would that be? In uh, Middletown, New Hampshire, proudly made. Um, in New Hampshire? Uh, I'm sorry, Middle Middletown, Connecticut. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, proudly made in Middletown, Connecticut. Um, no, you don't want to cross the you way. don't want to cross the traveling team streams. Uh, no, um, but the. But the thing is, a couple of the punch cards look like they've been punched over or replaced. Hmm. A lot of the punch cards look all the same, but a couple look like they were kind of stamped together and repunched. Um, Do I have a? Does it look like those punch cards? Did it happen in like a factory? Does it look like someone did that at home? Uh, it looks like someone. Uh, it, the, the materials are different aftermarket mm. so not done in the same factory um yeah <sighs> you don't know because you're not able to uh, understand what the orders and commands are um you know changed punch card punch cards mean changed behavior you just don't know what it was changed to mm. um what it used to be was these things were cleaning robots right um built-in vacuums Somebody change them. Can can I? I'll I'll take out the new punch cards and I'll I'll store them in my bag. Yep, yep. You got them kind of in a stack, all ordered. Maybe I can figure something out later. Yeah. I will also pry off one of the name tags that says Charlotte, <laughs> and got it. Put it on me. Got it. You're Charlotte. Yes. Charlotte. How? Yeah. Did they pull off your armor? I don't, wait, what, what? They, earlier when they attacked you, did they damage your armor? Uh, only well, I mean, the bullet did. Oh, okay. Are you okay? Uh, I'm f fair to moderate. Oh, for those of us that were shot, is the hermetic seal of our suits compromised? Um, yes, but you are given, um, standard issue, essentially a sealing foam that you can kind of inject oh, in. Good and reestablish the seal with right. Darby. Your wings is just so much that you can't, mm -hmm. but it's essentially meant to patch holes like a tire patch kit. Yeah. It's not enough for a new tire, but it's enough to patch it. Um, All right, let's go to the lake. So getting there from here is if it's your guests lobs is it's the lake outside of Mansfield center. Mm -hmm. And that's probably three miles due east. How do you want to get there? Walk? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From like building the what? He has a vehicle. Like, it, yeah. What? That one. <laughs> well, yeah. How do you want to go about finding a vehicle? Oh, uh, I, I would like to uh, have us do a, a sweeping formation to go through the, the area as we approach. Uh, so what we're in Coventry. Um, I don't know. There, there's a Mansfield Drive-In Theater Marketplace. Yeah, sure is. <laughs> <laughs> the Drive-In Theater. 
Yeah, let's go to the drive and see if there's any, car, any cars there we, we, we can take. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, uh, you know, it's not too far away. Uh, and so you're you're walking there, kind of following it on the map. As a team. As a team. <laughs> and once you're outside of kind of Coventry proper, it's like you're on another planet. There's just nothing here that wasn't built by a human at some point. Um, what's left of trees are thin wisps. They look gnarled and twisted. Uh. Um, anything that used to be a big actual tree has been felled long, long, long ago. So in in the space between towns in Massachusetts or New Hampshire or Maine, it's forest. It's all four. The Northeast is forest. There's no forest here. But then there's no... Feels weird. Yeah. Yeah. Because like normally you would think, well, if you look outside, what do you see? You'd see water or homes or roads or forests or farmland. And where you are, there should be those bottom two things, but they're not. Which means you're just seeing massive, empty fields of dirt. Gray-brown dirt. Rocks. I hate it. Bits of road. Darby, you don't smell a thing. Yeah, it's just nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Nothing. But there are people here in the nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we got to yeah. save them. But they're withering away too, like those trees. Yeah, I tell Kate Queen you said that. It was, it was, a, it was a poetic observation. Mm. <laughs> no, it's <was> pretty. <laughs> yeah. Remember the time I bet that you couldn't get me to the, uh, to the back of the robots and you didn't get me there. You, yeah. You, well, you, you sabotaged you it. I didn't sabotage it. I was being tactful, full of tactics. Should we play yeah. a game when we walk? Oh, yeah, definitely. Okay. What do you want to play, Mathers? Um, let's play a game where um, it's like a guess what I'm thinking game. Okay. So you think of something and I'll guess what it is. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Morgan, it's a carrot. Slobs, it's a mm-hmm. grenade. Mm-hmm. And Darby, it is a scuba flipper. I don't what? want to play this game with you anymore, man. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> well, okay, okay, fine. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide my thing under something traumatic. Just try finding it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've, I've hidden it. <laughs> it's dirty in that brain of mine. <laughs> fine. Is it a person, place, or thing? <laughs> oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's a thing. Is it a grenade? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found any cars yet? Yeah, you get to the drive in, and the the sign up um, looks really probably just the way it was when this place was open. Um, No one's defaced it. No one's torn it down. Um, Lists a movie you've never heard of. And there are a few cars, but they're not like facing the movie theater. They're just kind of like in the back along what you think was the snack stand. Um, the you kind of stop at a uh, you stop at a distance because the snack stand building looks fortified, and so you kind of like hold up and you kind of make an approach, um, and you know you kind of get close enough. You kind of do do the tactical approach thing that you know very well until eventually you get up to kind of the snack stand. It was. A bunch of kind of fencing was piled up around it to make something of like a, a berm. And you kind of vault over that and look in. Um, oh. 
Yeah, that's a skeleton laying on a mattress. <gasps> oh. Uh. I I put the covers over the skeleton. Sucks. Well, yeah. it was, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> it was very at risk. Uh, next to it uh, is a stack of books and a rifle. Oh, gosh. I, I toss the books to Mindy and I pick up the rifle. Anything good? Everything here was written before the war. There's nothing after. Huh. They're all really old. Pure luck here. Just give me a 2d6. Uh, 10. Here's a newspaper. Oh. From late in the war. Like maybe a month before it ended. A month before the surrender overseas. It's falling apart as you touch it, but not from rot, just kind of from age. The big article cover. No answers given. It's a whole big story from a university. Um, a bunch of scientists at the university. Um, talking about the fact that all of this is new and none of this makes sense. There's no bacterial readings. Everything is strange. But all the articles you're reading kind of get less and less sensical as it goes. Like the first couple of pages, it looks like it's been written and then edited sometime later by someone that almost didn't understand it. It starts to give you a kernel of an idea, Mindy. And the more you ruminate on it, the more you think you're right. Connecticut was hit with a magical weapon of mass destruction. During the war, and it not only rendered Connecticut unlivable, but it destroyed the memory of those who were here so that they could not rebuild. <sighs> Connecticut was always like this. In fact, you see that exact phrase at the end of a few of the articles, even though the whole rest of the article was scientists are trying to understand, they are doing tests, the governor cannot be found, all of these things. Mathers? You look concerned. This newspaper. It must have been written right when around this happened. This Connecticut or this the snack bar? Somebody did this to Connecticut. A, a, a person or a group of people. They did it on purpose. They did it because of the war. They, I, they scorched Connecticut? Is this what, is this what Nana tried to stop? This weapon? 
Mindy, your living room. Nana Mather's sitting. It was when we failed. That armistice came up with the idea that the defense of the people that we love may well be beyond the realm of possibility for a human that's just born. Defense? When there's something that you care about, you would do everything to protect that thing. And sweetie, this was during the war. And the thing that we cared about protecting was our home. And we knew that the other side across the ocean was developing magic so powerful it could reach across and do harm. They were making a weapon. So you wanted to make a, a worse one? We didn't think of it like that. We didn't think of it as an arms race. Those that were scrying during the war, my colleagues, in what we would eventually call the Leviathan. We're starting to see the timelines fray and the suffering. And we knew that whatever was going to happen was going to happen on the East Coast, south of us. And that's where we went. And it was the full strength of my intellect and Armistice's intellect and the intellect of the brightest and the most powerful people that ever played baseball. And we gathered in Hartford and we tried and we failed. And it was in that moment that the idea that we not Armistice and I said that we would not be strong enough to protect everyone, but we were strong enough to make someone who can. And it took decades until we created your sister. Back in Connecticut. Boy, these old cars still turn over. Yeah, they don't make them. Like <laughs> <it is. laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Just black, choking smoke. Darby, the first thing you've smelled, actually, um, comes, uh, comes out of this beautiful, bulbous, aerodynamic car. Uh, the, a Thunderbird. A Thunderbird. <laughs> mm. um, uh, I've, I've always wanted to drive one of these. I'm very excited. Um, the, no. the, um, the, the, the glove box is full of gloves. Actual oh. gloves. Oh, oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, they, they crack and are old, but they're nice. They're nice. Um, <laughs> the seat is crunchy. It sure is. Uh, it's tactile. Yep. Uh, it's um, full of tactics. And you start driving. It shakes so much. So <laughs> can you turn down the shake? Uh, I can only turn up the shake. I turn up the shake. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you drive. And what would have been at least a couple of hours of hiking overland becomes a bumpy but efficient ride in a very old car over the rolling treeless hills of the endless earth. 
a fun fact about the Thunderbird, it the gasoline's 50% uh led by volume. And that that's why the gasoline still works now. Don't breathe it. That's not I can breathe it. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, you you can oh it's bad. Um uh Darby, at one point you you realize that you you would be uh you would be better spent sitting on the hood uh with your wings folded down for grip like an anchor. Um Darby, you're a thunder blurred. You're a thunder 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 thunderbird. Thunderbird. <laughs> thunderbird. Uh, you're driving along uh, what used to be called Brown's Road um, until you get to this big intersection. Uh, there was a, ch- oh, there is, it's still there, uh, a church building, big stone church building, a big slate roof, mm-hmm. and a bell tower. Nice. Um, I stopped un- immediately to send Darby out flying so she can get a starting, uh, starting uh, ascent takeoff. To the bell tower. <laughs> yeah, so you um, so you take off, and uh, and as you're flying to the bell tower, you notice that there's, uh, well, there's a platform built up here, a wooden huh. platform, uh, rough hewn, and on it is a person that is just plain staring at you. <laughs> Infield, come in. There's a person up here. Are yep. they hostile? Uh, confused. I think they're confused. I'm going to land and say hello. All right. Good. I don't see a weapon. I'm just going to make a, a nice, gentle landing next to them. Darby? Mm-hmm. Do you want me to check for threats before you make contact? Oh, that's probably a good idea. Thinking of that. Think of that minus two charm you're rocking right now. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty, pretty charming. <laughs> I'll just double check. I'll just quickly. I'm I'm glad you feel that way. <laughs> read their mind. Two d six plus weird. Nine. He's a teenager and he's not from here. Not from Connecticut? A teenager. Is he cool? Darby? Mindy? I'm here. He's a teenager. Uh Uh-oh. And not Uh from Connecticut. Does he have stubble? That's really cool. Mm. He does. Oh, look out. Affirmative, he has stubble. Okay. We've done this before. Remember the farmer's market. They're cool, okay. but but cool. they're just humans. They're just humans. I okay. Approach I, got, I have this. He's okay, not from I'm, Connecticut. What is he doing here? Maybe he's from Rhode that. Island doing a shipment. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. He is staring at me. I think he should be probably open to make contact to you. Yeah. I think I need to. I think if I fly away now, he's gonna think this was all a dream. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I am now approaching. <laughs> Scream over the roof. Yeah, all right, kid. Why don't you land? Okay, I will. Scooch. Give me some room. Yeah, he, that's he's, a good idea. He scooches um, and uh, is is holding in his hand a switchblade that he has not opened, but he's just kind of holding it. Oh, I got one much bigger than that. You can put it away. <laughs> Mine's got flames and everything. Darby, say that catchphrase. Uh, I'm gonna light you on fire if you mess with me. <laughs> I saw how we wait that okay. one. <laughs> no, never mind. Hey, look, I don't want any trouble. Sorry, no, sorry. That I don't want any trouble. I don't know I'm about sorry. the boss, but I don't want any trouble. Who's the boss? That what? For, first of all, that wasn't to you. That was to my friend who I was talking to. I She told me to say the catchphrase, and I panicked a little bit, and I made up a new one, and it wasn't, <laughs> I am so sorry. Um, Maybe I forgot to give you the catchphrase. I'm sorry. Yeah, what's the catchphrase? Yeah, so, yeah. No, we all got our struggles. Are you an angel? Charm, everybody. I am an, I am an angel. Um, yes. 
sorry, I am now present with you. I was distracted by the voices in my head, like real voices, like sound recording. Are they voices. from other like, angels? No, <laughs> no. That when that happens, it normally is a little bit foreboding and means not good stuff is going to happen, um, or it means I'm just getting visited by my brother Declan. But Mindy doesn't like it when that happens. She's yeah, one of the voices yeah. in my head, Darby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Darby, you're still on speaker. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I just need to go ahead and turn this off. Okay. Hi, I'm Darby. Uh, yes, you figured it out. I'm an angel. Um, and I'm a little eager. Um, so that's... Oh, city, huh? What city? Massachusetts? Massachusetts, Somerville. Hey, the Sunflowers. Nice. You oh, heard of us? All right. Yeah, I've been up to Somerville, eager? sure. No, I wish. You didn't play? Suburbs. Ah. Oh, well, I mean, that means you had to really fend for yourself then, right? Yeah, you don't know the half of it. I mean, I would like to, but first, sorry, before we get to, I would like to hear your whole life story and everything that you have faced. Um, but before we get to that, um, we're here. We need herbs. And we were told that if we could find the lake ciders, if you're a lake cider, maybe you could help us get some herbs, preferably fresh ones, because there's someone who's hurt and we need them to do a ritual. Who's hurt? The mayor of Coventry. Huh. He kind of shows his hands and then takes out a walkie talkie, modern looking one. Hmm. Yeah, we got some folks looking for trade out at the church checkpoint. Yeah, Coventry's in trouble. Yeah, like immediate trouble. Oh. Wait, are um, you on good terms with Coventry? A flare's shot from maybe a couple of blocks that way. Big green flare. I counter flare. <laughs> I panic. <laughs> yeah, you launch a flare. <laughs> oh, all right. Green flare means good. Green means go. Green means Boss go. will be waiting for you. Do I go to the flare? Well, get get in that car and drive in. You'll see the way. Oh, okay. Okay. Have a um. Have a nice day. Yeah. It was nice to yeah, meet. Yeah, we will. Okay, I'm going. I'm More, gonna go. Gonna, I'm... You. You're cool. Um. Oh, see you around. Okay, bye. <laughs> Morgan, I'm sorry. I I saw a flare, so I, I just flared back. Yeah. You just, right, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I I reached over past your head and did it in I, front of you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. You drive the car oh, hey, Darby. Um, down a stretch of uh, a stretch of road. And it's the only stretch of kind of flat, uninterrupted ground you see. Everything else is covered in debris. Um, no alleyways, no just debris. Fields and fields of debris with the occasional building or tent. The, the land pitches down a little bit. And you can actually see the lake in a distance. This gross, hazy lake, about as gray as the sky. And in front of it's a great big building that looked like a shopping center. Kind of big L-shaped with a parking lot. But there's a bunch of stuff built up on the roof. So it's almost like a, imagine like a flotilla of houseboats built on top of a building. Hmm. Hmm. And there are people out here. Lots of people. A few dozen. Oh. Do Teenagers. any of them look like the boss? No. They're all teenagers? Yeah, pretty much. Mm. Mm. I don't have a good feeling about this. I do. I bet it'll be fine. 
It's like Lord Morgan's of the Flies out here. You you stop when a couple of them kind of come forward and put their hands up. Hello. Hi. Hi. Here to uh, trade with the boss? I'm here to trade with the boss. All right. We want you to stand right there. There's a big red splotch. Paint, not blood, you think. Right in the middle of the parking lot. This is obviously a trap, Morgan. She wants to sit in a car. I'm her driver. You can call me Slobs, the driver. All right, right on. Uh, whoever right on? To... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you turn. They kind of back up. You're standing near, or you're, you've driven up to near the kind of red splotch. Um, and, yeah. The activity kind of continues. People are, like, sitting, like, legs over the edge of the roof of this shopping center, some of them are like going into like their buildings and huts. Others of them are just watching. All of them are armed. Um, and a uh, a door opens, and uh, what is kind of pushed out is well, kind of a big chair on like a little sled. It's almost like a door opens up and this kind of chair comes out and it looks like a balcony. Um, and the boss is sitting in that chair. Whoa. I'm going to open the door and get out. Yeah, you look up at the boss. The boss looks down at you. Symbol nod. He I nods say out back. Loud. <laughs> <laughs> I read his mind. <laughs> uh, 2d6 plus weird. Minus one because he's a groundhog. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? I was walking into that trap. Classic oh, groundhog nice. trap. I should have asked if he was a groundhog before I rolled. Yeah. Um, seven. Um, sure. Um, do you want a secret or do you want his intentions? Hmm. <sighs> Secret. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah. That's fair. I need it. (laughs) (laughs) I'll give you the secret. What episode is this? This is uh, episode 81. Thank you. Wait, John, you had this prepared as a secret? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. It's his backstory. (laughs) (laughs) Otis, that's the name of the groundhog. Oh, great name. Left West Virginia after angering Ned the (gasps) Dead, the great dead stag. (laughs) He wanted to make a new life for himself up here where he could be a king of the wastes. Seems like he achieved his dream. You do not know who Ned the Dead is, but it's a very visceral feeling in your mind. Sounds spooky. Feels spooky. Yeah. Um. That's what I want. Like, 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 like a, like, like like a pan over to Chicago (laughs) for just like a a second. Yep. (laughs) Yeah, they're having fun. They're playing a game right now. Oh, great. (laughs) Head back. (laughs) Um, Otis kind of extends his uh, his paw, and one of the teenagers um, holds a microphone uh, in front of him, or like a bullhorn. Here to trade, huh? Here to trade. What do you want? What do you got? We got herbs. No, uh, nope. no, no. Uh, we no, want no. herbs. Other way around, other way around. Oh. oh, God. We want herbs. I'm sorry. We want herbs. We got a car. We and, got a car. Uh, I we have got a lot of cars. We got a rifle. Oh, we got rifles. Uh, do you have high tech plastic explosives? Yeah, we do. Oh, really? Do you have oh. ramen noodles? What we don't have. Is armor that pretty? Yeah. 
The day before the calamity. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Armistice Pierce, Clarissa Mathers. Standing on the highest floor of the tallest building in Hartford. The entire marble floor of it etched with hasty but very, very precise runes. Armistice looks at Clarissa, and Clarissa looks at Armistice. Clarissa looks at the floor, glances at the stack of missives from the scries, This has to work. Armistice nods. It has to work. If it doesn't work, Armistice holds up her hand. It's going to work. Armistice walks to the window. Stares out at the city. And the great beautiful green of Connecticut beyond it. It has to work. Okay, Darby. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. This is number... Uh, catchphrase number five. All right. Ready? Uh, mm-hmm. when, whenever you're, you're, you're ready to go, go. Okay. Burst into flame and you're ready to take my name. Okay. That's good. That's good. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll read that. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a three. <sighs> Oh, yeah. okay. Um, okay. Um, N- number number six. Number six. Um, uh, slay. Hey. No. No, you didn't. Yeah, you, you no. didn't feel confident. We're, we're just going to that, that one. one. I didn't feel no. good about that one at all. Mm. I didn't it's feel fine. good about that one at all. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, I rather go go through volume than um than just you know yeah, uh, right. limit ourselves. All right. Can, uh, can we do number number five again? Number five again. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I forgot what it was. It was the burst one. Oh, burst into flame. That's my name. Oh, that was a good end. Oh, that was better. Yeah, yeah. 